Welcome to LabMins.com and our lab video series in Cisco ACS. You can find complete lists of ACS videos on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we will configure basic device admin on Cisco ACS using TACX. We will go through the whole process of adding network devices and users as well as authentication and authorization policies. We will use the Cisco switch and ASA as our test devices. Here's our lab setup. On VLAN 32, we have an ACS 5.4 installed at the IPF.100, and we have a Windows 2008 domain controller at the IPF.40. For our test devices, we have the switch and the firewall. We're going to be sourcing everything from loopback 0 on the switch, 172.16.01, and then on the firewall, we're going to use the IPF 10.252. We will be using four test user accounts. Two of those are going to be located on AD, and the other two local to the ACS. On the AD, we have admin1 as part of network admin group that we're going to give a privilege 15, and the user support1 that's part of AD group network support that we're going to deny access. Now for the local user, we have local1 that's part of local admin group that we're going to assign privilege 15, and then we have local2 that's part of local support that we're also going to deny access. So the first thing I want to show you is the two AD test user. So here on our Active Directory user and computer, we have the admin1 account that is a member of network admin. And we also have a support1 account that's a member of network support. Next, we're going to log into our ACS server. Since we're going to be utilizing Active Directory as the identity source, we want to make sure that our integration with Active Directory is still good and functioning. So under the external identity stores and active directory, you can see status is currently joined and connected to the domain name labminist.com. Okay, so now we're going to begin our configuration by adding network device by first creating a network device group. And these are the some of the groups that you can logically place your network devices under. So later on, if you wish to create or condition based on the network device group as part of your authorization policy, you can do so. So by default, it comes with a location and device type device group. So under location, we are going to create a simple location called HQ or under parent all location and submit okay, HQ. And then under the device type, we're going to create one call switch for our switch. And then we are going to create another one called firewall for our ASA. And under then the two default device group, you can come up with as many device group as you like by just click create right here. All right, once we have the device network device group created, we can go ahead and start adding our network devices. So the first device that we will add is the switch. So the name of the switch is switch one. For the location, this is where all the network device group will comes into play. Then you place them into the corresponding device group. So location is HQ and then device type, we're gonna pick switch. And then we have to give it the IP or tell the ACS the IP that it expects coming from the switch. We said we get a source it from the loopback of the switch, which is 7001. You can see you also have an option to do based on IP subnet or IP range. So when you create a network device, it might not be just for a single device, but for a group of devices. Okay, for us, we're just gonna use a switch. Here we are going to intentionally input an incorrect IP. So later on, we'll see how the ACS will respond when an unknown IP is trying to contact the ACS. So we'll come back and fix that later on in this lab. So let's leave that at zero, let's say dot four, because our actual IP is dot one. Share secret is Cisco. So you can also share it in clear text, and then we can go submit. Okay, and then we also gonna add our ASA, and the name of that is FW1. You can select your location and device type, firewall, the IP address is 172.16.10.252. And then again, share secret is Cisco. Okay, submit. And as I mentioned back in the web interface walkthrough video, there's also a concept of device or default network devices. For any device that did not match this list under the network device explicitly will be treated based on whatever you defined under the default network device. And if it's disabled, then obviously the ACS will just drop the request. So we're gonna leave that as disabled. And that's it for the adding network devices. Next, we're gonna start adding our local users. And we say we're gonna have two type of users for the local admin and then local support. So first, we're gonna create an identity groups 
for our users. The first group we'll call that local admin and then submit and then create one more call local support. And as you can see, this is a hierarchy of groups, so you can actually go further and create like a subgroup of a group if you want. Next, we're going to create users. So under uh, internal identity stores, we'll click on users. And by default, there's no user, so we'll create one. And our first local user is called local1. So for the name is local1. And then we assign that to the identity group we just created, which is local admin for this particular user. You can also specify account expiration if you like. And then if you also want to utilize like an external database for the password lookup, you can also do that as well by choosing the corresponding external identity source. By default, it's going to be using internal password. So for the password and this user, we're going to do Cisco123. One, two, three. One, two, three. Later on, we also want to show you how the password can be changed at first login. So we can click on that. And for the enable password, we're just going to do Cisco123 as well. And then you click submit to create the user. And then we need to create one more for our local2 with the local support group. So local2, local support. And then password, we're just going to do Cisco, Cisco, and Cisco, Cisco for enable password. And then submit. All right, so that's all you need to do for creating ACS local users. Next, we're going to get under the policy elements and the concept of authentication authorization policies of ACS 5.x is a little different now that everything is based on conditioning and results. So when you build your policies, it's going to go from top to bottom in the, the policy table and trying to match a conditions. And whatever that policy or rule that is matched, the results authorization permissions will be pushed down to that particular user. So, so as far as the Condition, you can condition based on date and time. So if you want your user to access your network devices or lock into network devices during certain date and time, you can do that. You can condition based on a specific a custom attributes and you can create them right here. And that's just going to go through your ACS dictionary. And there's other conditions you can do based on end station filter, device filter, and device port filter. We're going to look at device filter in our future videos. For the results, if you're dealing with device admin like we do here, you only have two type of results that you can return to the user. One is shell profile, and that's related to the privilege levels. And the other one is command set, which is related to command authorization, which again, we'll look at in the next video on the advanced device admin. But if you're dealing with radius authentication or network access, then you have an option to push down downloadable ACLs and then any custom radius attributes that you would like to return to the device. Here we're dealing with TACX device admin and in particular shell profile. So we're gonna create a shell profile. So for the name, we're gonna create one called privilege 15, just to be descriptive to what we're about to set and max 15. And if you move over to the common task, this is the default privilege that you want the users to have access when they first lock into the device. So we said we would like to allow admin one and local one to have privilege 15 right off the bat when they're trying to lock in. So for the default privilege, we choose static and the value is 15. As far as the maximum privilege, it basically dictates what is the maximum level of privilege that the user can move around on the command line, which we will again look into detail later in the advanced uh, device admin video. So for now, we're going to do maximum 15. So we allow this whoever that inherit this particular privilege to have maximum privilege. And you can see here once you choose the attributes under the common task, it gets converted to the corresponding attributes for TACX. And in, on top of that, if you wish to push down particular TACX attribute, you can also do it right here. Okay, so submit for us that should be it with the privilege 15 and max 15. Now we're going to go ahead and start creating our authentication authorization policies. So the way it works here, there's uh, what I see as a two-step process. First, when the request comes in, the ACS will evaluate the service selection rules. So whatever rule that gets matched right here would take you to the next step, which is accessed services. Okay, so let's go through that right now. So first we need to create our access services. And usually you create 
a unique access services for each of the service that you want to provide to your user. Here we're dealing with a device admin services, so we'll call it lm-device-admin. And here you have an options to select from a template. So if you choose from one of the four default template that ACS provide, you can just do that also if it's simple enough and it matches your needs. Or you can also duplicate from any existing service if you like. And by default, there are two of those, which is the default device admin and network access that we have disabled currently. So you can just copy from those as well. Or you can create from scratch, which is what we're going to be doing right now. There are three main types of service, which is network access, device admin, and external proxy. Here we're dealing with device admin. So we'll click device admin. And then as far as policy structure, you have identity, group mapping, and authorization. You usually don't see much used uh, on the group mapping, so we'll leave that unchecked. And then we're just going to use identity and authorization. We'll click next. And here we need to configure allow protocol as far as what protocol you want this particular access services to serve or to allow. When you deal with TACX, all you need is just to allow PAP and ASCII, and you don't even need to have process host lookup. Everything else should be unchecked as well. So we'll click finish. And as soon as you do that, it's asking you if you would like to modify the service selection policies and activate the service. So we can say yes. And it will take you to the service selection rule page. So here we can go ahead and create. And we can just use the default rule number one. And for condition, we can just match based on TACX. So we're going to say anything that's coming in using TACX protocol, we're going to pass it down to the access service called LM device admin that we just created. And by default, it's deny access. So that's good. Go we'll save change. So you can see how it works here. Then the first the request comes in, it's going to go through this table and trying to match based on the condition. And then it will select the corresponding serv uh, access services. And then we'll, we'll continue to evaluate the request from there. So you can see as soon as you add the access services or use it under the service selection rules, it will be turned green or becomes enable. So now under that, we have to specify the identity source that we want to use by default to deny access. And here you have a two options of single result selection or a simple matching, or you can also do a rule based matching as well. If you want to use different identity source based on different conditions for here, we're just going to say anything or anybody who wants to lock into our switch in the firewall, we're going to authenticate them against the same identity source, which in this case, we're going to point to identity source sequence that we created in the previous video in the Active Directory integration. We have one called AD local, which is basically look at AD first. And then if the user is not found, it will continue looking at the local database and click OK. Just to make a quick note, you expand the advanced option. You have a different options for the how you want to treat the authentication fail, user not found and the process fail. By default, they're either rejected or dropped, which is fine. So we'll save change. So that's for the authentication policy. Next, we're going to look at authorization policy. So by default, if you look at under the conditions column, there's only compound condition defined. So if you want to use the additional conditions, what you need to do is to click on the customize button down here. And then you can see a whole lot of options that you can use for your condition. So first, let's get rid of the compound condition. And let's pick a couple of the conditions from our list here. First, let's see. We can do protocol again if you want. And we're going to be conditioning based on AD group as well as the local group. So we need to find the right here, AD1 external group. And then for the local group is identity group. Okay, for the results, we said we're going to only deal with the shell profile from now. So let's remove the command set since we're not doing any command authorization at all in this video. We'll click OK. Now that we have the conditions that we want to use in place, we can create our authorization rule. So we'll click create for rule number one protocol. Again, this is kind of redundant. I'm just going to do it anyway. We'll make sure it's TACX protocol. We're going to try to match the user that's part of the network admin group from the AD. So we'll select external group and we'll select the group from our list that we selected again back in the Active Directory integration video. And we said the group that we want is network admin. So we'll select network admin. And then at both of these conditions are matched, we want to assign Perch 15 Max 15 shell profile to the user. OK, 
Okay, so we'll click OK. Now we need to create one more for local group, local admin. So we'll click Create. Again, protocol, we'll select TACX. And for identity group, we'll select local admin. Show profile, again, pre 15, max 15. Now for the two remaining users, as long as there's no, they're not matching these two rules, it's going to fall all the way down to the default. And since the default is, result is permit access, we need to modify that and change it to deny access. So we're just going to use the default rule to deny access for the other two users, then save. So that should be it for the configuration on the ACS to support device admin. We now can move on to the configuration on the switch and the firewall.